at the interface for late replies, we have a global section across the top. We have a bypass button for the whole plugin. We have independent dry and wet mix controls, a variety of functions here. We can hide the metering. It's a panic button, a randomize button, undo, redo, etc. We have a preset menu here. We can manage all the presets as well as program changes. Now we have the input to the whole plugin down the left side here. We can control the input level here. We can process the input signal before it hits the delay unit with plugins, and we can click here to go for any of the built-in effects that ship with late replies or third-party VST or audio unit plugins. We set the base delay value and sync options here. From there, the signal runs into the pattern module over here where we determine the number of repeats or replies that are generated. And then there's a mixer for the pattern module here that we can hide or show with this button where we can mix each of the independent replies with level and pan controls, phase inversion, and again, any of the built-in effects or third-party plugins. Next, the signal goes to the loops module where we have two independent feedback loops and a loops module mixer at the bottom that we can hide or show with that button. And each of the two loops can be processed again with plugins. From there, we go to the output section where we can process the entire output of the plugin with, again, third-party plugins or the built-in plugins. We have an overall spread control for the stereo image of what's generated, and we can duck all the replies that are generated here, either based on the input signal or an external sidechain input. And at the end, we have an output limiter and finally an output level for the plugin. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to choose the default preset, and I have this on the Fender Rhodes right now. And we can process the input signal, which I'm going to do over here. I'm going to call up some modulation to start with. And we can bypass the plugin either here or from this button over here. And we use this to hide or show the actual plugin interface. Let's set this up. We'll sync to quarter notes. A little bit of feedback. I got some flanging on the bass delay that's generated. And I think I'll do a bit of EQ to roll off the low end so we can really distinguish it. Now the bass delay setting defines the value used by the pattern and loop section. So we can set it freely to milliseconds, or we can sync it to the host tempo. So now this is set to one and a half beats, that's like a dotted quarter note. And we can also sync independently to a specific tempo separate from the host tempo. We have the inertia parameter that defines the time it takes for the delay to switch to a new value when we change the bass delay. The larger the value here, the more we're going to get a tape flutter effect. the more smoothly it's going to change without any tape or wow effect. Let's go back to our host sync. I'll go to one and a half beats. Now the pattern module is next. We can turn it on or off here. We have an independent mix control here. I'm going to leave it up for the moment. And we have a menu here for presets that we can load in. and they contain settings pertaining to both the timing information and the pattern mixer. The menu on the left contains just timing information. This is the menu with only the sequence settings. So let me set this down to a lower number of replies. We can go up to eight, but I'm gonna to go to three. And then we have the grid over here, and the delay relative to the base delay value can be set independently for each of the taps or replies. The timeline is used to define the number of replies that are generated. So this grid here is based on the duration of the base delay. So if I go down to something like that, I'll get a triplet feel. 
Now you'll see that these aren't right on the grid. I can use this button to snap them to the grid and I can use this to make sure all changes are automatically snapped to the grid. Now there's a randomize button here. I can randomize either the full pattern, which will randomize the delay times, the pan, level, and phase inversion, which we get from here for each of the replies, or I can randomize just the sequence. And they're being randomized all snapped to the grid. Or I can randomize just the levels and the pan by going to levels mode over there and hitting the dice button, the levels and the pan. Let me set these manually again. We can take snap to grid off if we want some of these to be slightly ahead or behind the beat and move them off the grid like that. Now I can process them each individually. Let's try some modulation on the first one. This is just on the first reply that's generated. I have two LFO shapes. Go for something more subtle. I can lower that level flip the phase. Let's process the next one with a filter. Have different types. I'll bring it up so we can hear it. There's a low pass. Of course, we can adjust the level in the pen independently as well as the phase inversion. We can even add delays onto each of these. We can even add another instance of late replies, but let's go with a multi tap delay for this third one. And I'll sync it. And from there, we go into the loops module. The loops module contains two parallel feedback loops or echoes that can interact with each other through cross feedback. And both loops are identical. There's one and there's two. They each have their separate power buttons. Now in the loops timeline, we can define pre-delay with the blue part here. And we can use the green part for the length of each feedback loop. We turn it on here. We have a separate dry, wet mix knob and presets. Another menu on the side here for the phase of the delays. We set the grid here similarly like we do in the pattern module. Snap to grid functions are the same as well. But we can double the timeline or quadruple it or go eight times. And here we have randomized functions again. And full loops mode will randomize all the parameters for both loops. When we go to sequence, we randomize just the pre-delay and delay time for both loops, meaning the blue and green indicators. And finally, we have levels where we randomize all the parameters except the pre-delay and loop time. So all these over here. Let's initialize the loops module and explore the parameters in more detail. Now we can manage separate presets for each of the loop modules with these menus over here. There's one for loop module one and another one for loop module two over here. And the black section over here contains general mixing settings that are used to sum both of the loops together. So we have level and pan and phase inversion over there. Everything inside the blue section 
relates to what happens inside each of the two feedback loops. So let's start by adjusting the feedback level and now where the loops start. I'll have that one start at the beginning and I'll offset this one. We'll set some level up. I'm going to invert this one and a bit of cross feed to feed it into two. We have panning for the individual ones. I'll pan this one that way. And on loop two over here, we'll set the level up a bit higher. And we'll pan that opposite. And we'll cross feed some of this into the first loop as well. And we have cross talk, which I'll dial up for both of them. Let's offset the phase there. And again, these are general mixer settings. And again, we can process each of these with different plugins. Let's try a compressor on the first loop. Just to get a bit more even response from it. And then this one here, let's try a bit of a gate. I don't want to get too much of it though. We also have a freeze control, and this lets you freeze what's inside the loop. But it's not just an on-off switch, we can choose the amount of freezing that we want. So it'll freeze wherever you're at when you dial that up. And the in-mix section over here is the volume of the direct non-repeated signal that's processed by the loop. So usually the volume of the first repeat not processed by the feedback loop. We can have less of this if we want. Here are just the loops. I think I'll ease back on this. Finally, we can use the post effects section to process all the replies together. Let's try the sweep filter. And I've got a preset that I've saved on my own. So I'm using a low pass filter, sync to quarter notes. We can control the overall stereo image and we can duck the level of all the replies. In this case I'm going to use the input signal but we can also optionally use an external side chain. So this will tame some of these feedback loops here. see the activity here. So that's Blue Cat Audio's Late Replies.